Right now, we want to get into the campaign. Actually, the plays for the presidency, which is something we do on Fridays, typically in the third hour of the morning briefing. But today, for scheduling reasons, Alan Kelly has uh, graced our studios in the early morning hours, getting the coffee, sort of manually waking up with the uh, pulling his eyes open and apart. So good morning. I'm here. Early. You're up early anyway, aren't you? I am. Well, somewhat. Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. Here we go. Uh, well, we're going to talk about something that you've been blogging about, and for those who don't know, Alan is the CEO of the. Bethesda-based consultancy Playmaker Systems, PlaysToRun.com. It is the uh, periodic table of elements, if you will, for politics. And we talk about how people are playing different aspects of the campaign. And we take you back to last Saturday night. My mother was born in Kansas. My father was born in Kenya. And I was born, of course, in Hawaii. At which point the president gave a wink and a nod. And the reason I bring that up is because we want to spend a little time talking about politics and computers. <laughs> At sure. their core, they're boring. <laughs> uh, but this is this is the big celebrity argument that has been playing out. You, you sort of frame this up for us, Al. It occurred to me. I, I come from Silicon Valley. That's where most of my career was spent. And mm-hmm. uh, it, it began to occur to many of us who had started there in the 80s and into the 90s that the game for how we marketed, how we uh, we sold uh, computers and software had to change, we realized that it had to start to become entertaining because at their core, they're boring. Compilers, uh, assembly uh, assembly language, compiler code, applications, generators, these are some of the things that tortured my career, you know, are interesting only to nerds. Mm-hmm. Well, I think the, the Functionality same. goes only so far. <laughs> yes, and the novelty quickly wears off. Right. So it becomes the application uh, or you know, or the solution rather than a feature that really makes things important. Well, I think to some extent the the same the analogy holds true for politics too, is that is the, is that we have to figure out how to constantly apply and make politics interesting beyond the filibuster and cloakers and you know and gerrymandering sure. and things like this. You have to bring it up to a level of abstraction that's in, that's interesting to the average bear. Um, and so you look at the White House correspondence dinner uh, last week. Uh, which you attended. I'm so curious to know what you, Pam, and Jared were all wearing. But um, well, Jared and I had tuxedos. Pamela had a gorgeous dress I am on. Sure. Yeah. You know. um, this this is a fantastic backdrop to make politics completely portable to so many ty- different types of things. It makes no sense that Lindsay Lohan and Kim Kardashian, you know, are are at this dinner, mm-hmm. but they are. It's sort of this weird symbiotic thing that I should write another blog on. But that is it's a great stage uh, where the president can come and run plays that normally he can't touch. It's a unique stage that lets him do mm-hmm. a lot of things and address a lot of ticklish issues. Well, we talked about that one. That was the birth issue, which yeah. was sort of fun last year because he made fun of Donald Trump, who was one of the big pushers of this, <laughs> I want to see the birth certificate. So we've, we discussed that one. There was another one he hit on. You can tell me what you think this play is. Jimmy got a start years ago on The Man Show. In Washington, that's what we call a congressional hearing on contraception. Okay, so Jimmy Kimmel is what he's referring to, and he was the uh, the sort of MC, the comedy entertainment. Now yeah. this is referring to the quote-unquote war on women and a congressional hearing which featured testimony from only men on an issue that women say we have a vested interest in. How come you weren't listening to any women? Well, it's in his interest to keep the, the image of of you know a half dozen men uh, you know testifying about contraception alive and it's hard for him to do that in some sort of official capacity but he can come to the the press dinner and he can make a joke mm-hmm. through humor through facetious references and in this case a play we call a ping he can he can subtly bring it back uh, where normally he he couldn't do it, he would be accused of of uh, all sorts of uh, you know purposive sort of self serving politics if he did that. But this is a joke, so he can do it, and so it's a very effective way of keeping what was an awkward moment for uh, Republicans generally, um, and you can keep it alive. And how about this one where he talks about Mitt Romney? We also both have degrees from Harvard. I have one. He has two. What a snob. <laughs> All right, so is that a play? Is that a call out? It's, 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 a, very, it's a very similar play as, as to the previous one. What he's doing, again, he's using, uh, he's using humor to keep alive awkward ideas, images, references, things that have happened um, that his, his opponents would really rather have buried at this point. Santorum should be 
done and gone, <laughs> except, of course, they're meeting today, he and Mitt. But, um, you know, the reference that he's a snob is, is something that they would rather not have anymore in the, in the news cycle. But he gets to bring it back. This whole, this whole speech was about managing, um, managing in the things that they have attempted to manage out and cauterizing, you know, seeping wounds in Obama that he can then fix and flip to his advantage. So it's a highlight video, or in this case, a highlight uh, monologue of the it was a clinic. foibles of, of or the problems for the Romney campaign, yes. like like this one, too. <laughs> You're ready. Recently, his campaign criticized me for slow jamming the news with Jimmy Fallon. In fact, that you? <laughs> I understand Governor Romney was so incensed, he asked his staff if he could get some equal time on the Merv Griffin show. <laughs> okay, so what he's done there is he's now said, look, I'm just doing something to be on the talk shows. There's nothing wrong with that. And not only am I cool, but you're so uncool that you like the Merv Griffin show, which hasn't been on the air for years. And you are so embedded in the past, which I guess is the intent of that joke. You have to think in, in the whiteboards of the campaign war room in Chicago for Obama that there is the word cool mm-hmm. written up there. Or maybe in, when it comes to the whiteboard for Mitt, something like awkward or not cool. Uh, it, it seems, uh, it, it's, it's clear to me that, that so much of what the campaign is about is to consistently make Obama cool. Mm-hmm. He couldn't be cooler uh, coming to this dinner. And uh, he couldn't be cooler slow jamming with Jimmy Fallon. Um, and it couldn't be more surgical or damaging to Mitt to have him uh, liken uh, Romney to Merv Griffin, who mm-hmm. probably three quarters of the audience didn't even know. <laughs> um, but it's, Except it's, for the casinos that he owned in, 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 in Atlanta. Was that Pam whooping up in the background? Yeah, I, I was heard, probably. I, I was curious, though, how does Mitt Romney get around it? Does he just say, all right, he's, he's, I'm, I'm awkward, but, you know, I'm effective? Great. Uh, that's that's I would guess the response would it not be to play? Is, well, the, the, yes. Uh, that's but do prob- you acknowledge your awkwardness? Do you say, by the way, I'm not the funniest guy in the world, and I'm not really probably the coolest guy in the world. I just know I get stuff done. I think you do. Uh, I think you do big time. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, Al Gore finally started to figure out that he's very wooden. He even clapped his hands funny, and so he started to go on Letterman mm-hmm. to start to make fun of himself to do self-deprecating things. Okay, Romney's in a very strong position to do that because I think there's a really good argument that Obama is going over the top with his coolness. Mm-hmm. Now he did immediately get on a jet and 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 get off to um, the Middle East where he was doing serious business with troops and yeah, you know, right, right in the middle of Afghanistan and yeah, making that right. address. So. That was pretty smart because mm-hmm. it inoculates him from these silly, frivolous things of you know of somehow having him and Lindsay Lohan you know spoken in the same sentence. But even so, uh, Mitt Romney I think is in a position of of redredging you know this this idea of uh, of the celebrity. Well, president. he's going to be doing another dinner at George Clooney's house. Uh, Twelve million dollars they're mm-hmm. expecting to raise, which mm-hmm. is again tapping into the Hollywood Hollywood mm-hmm. vein of money. I, there's another one here, and I want to get your take on this one because this is a clip that, uh, well, just listen to the president. We'll get to your reaction to it. He took a few hours off the other day to see The Hunger Games. Some of you have seen it. It's a movie about people who court wealthy sponsors and then brutally savage each other until only one contestant is left standing. I'm sure this was a really great change of pace for him. I have not seen The Hunger Games. Not enough class warfare for me. So, so in a way, he says it's full of class warfare, and which is why Mitt Romney is familiar with it, but on the other hand, is not enough class warfare. But, but, I mean, how does that play? I mean, is, is that a little bit too subtle a dig, or it just didn't strike me as the strongest necessarily, except to say that Mitt Romney, I guess, is a rapacious um, you know, capitalist who wants to fire people. <laughs> Well, the to me the key concept is warfare. As mm-hmm. I monitor landscape, who's running what plays, what are the counters, and uh-huh. stuff like that. I, I I key on a hot word for me is warfare because it's it's kind of a it is a football of sorts. I think they're the parties trying to figure out who started what war. Mm-hmm. There's war on women. There's war on bubble gum. There's they'll they'll create a war on anything. And 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 as soon as one does something, the other will say, "Well, you're creating the war." And then they'll say, "No, we didn't. You did it because you said this." And so you can get into this. You're the aggressor. Uh, yeah, and who's the aggressor and who's not? Who's committing warfare took and who's, the first who's shot, defending? Took the first punch. This is 
Obama ran four or five plays we call a preempt, which is simply, you know, a flipping of the of the table mm-hmm. um, so that he can take, he can get on to the advantage. And, um, you know, I think there's some question as to whether or not the Democrats actually started creating, you know, that particular war. But then the way that he brings it up, it certainly creates the uh, creates the impression among very important influencers, Lindsay Lohan accepted, <laughs> that um, uh, you know that 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 they actually are managing this and they didn't start to create the war. Mm-hmm. The the last one, and I'm, let, I think we have time. Let's go through this one. In my first term, we ended the war in Iraq. In my second term, I will win the war on Christmas. In my first term, we repealed the policy known as Don't Ask, Don't Tell. In... <laughs> Wait, though. In my second term, we will replace it with a policy known as It's Raining Men. Now, I, I wonder about this because it's, you know, the war on Christmas is just kind of a funny reference, I guess. But, but the, the It's Raining Men and uh, Don't Ask, Don't Tell... There are a lot of those in the gay community who are upset with the president for not evolving his position sufficiently on gay marriage. Now, he may do it by the election. One guesses that he probably won't because there's no reason to take a stand right now. And yes, the progress is there with Don't Ask, Don't Tell. So how does this play go? I mean, he's not that's not an attack on Mitt Romney, right? I mean, that's that's not something there. Is it is it a play to assuage his base somehow? What is he doing there? I call it a crazy Ivan. Um, <laughs> Instead of I going mean, to the left, you go to the right. Well, it's a silly name for a serious play where, mm-hmm. where you, you turn and you, you rush, you sort of bull rush an aggressor. Mm-hmm. Where you know they're coming at you. And in a way, you sort of got two aggressors. He has the gay community saying, come on, man, not enough, not enough. Mm-hmm. And he has the birthers or people of that constituency say, you know, saying what they say. So what he does is he, he turns on them and he says something very provocative that puts them on the defensive. That would be the birthers, makes makes them look really, look fairly silly. Or not the birthers, what am I, am I lost here? No, the, um, <laughs> on the, on the, don't ask, don't tell? Yeah. Or? Yeah, well, there's there's too many constituencies, and it's too early in the morning. But 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 he he by bringing them in the same reference, he's able to show that you know he's balancing here a series of interests. And don't ask, don't tell had its merits, um, but you know he can only push it so far, so fast. So uh, you know again, like this, like four or five. Well, I, you know we could go long. I think he probably ran ten or twenty different plays mm-hmm. through ten or twenty different jokes that he normally just can't simply do in a serious capacity, using humor and using facetious references and using the backdrop of the liberati and the glitterati gives him a chance to manage the the discussion in a way he just can't do. Always great, Alan. Thanks for coming in a little early. This Good week. to see you. Plays2run.com. That is with the numeral two in there if you'd like to see what Alan Kelly's writing about.